Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner, continuing lecture series on basic mathematics by Sergey Lang. Hopefully by now you're starting to get more comfortable with mathematical proofs and thinking logically, which is really what this course is all about. The algebra and stuff has a side effect. You're going to learn some skills to do algebra, but when you're doing physics, you really have to understand how to put logical ideas together, and this is this is what makes a physics so fun is is doing these exercises. So this section is 1.4 even and odd integers and divisibility. And this is going to be quite different than any of the other sections you've done now because we're almost going to entirely focus on some proofs and theorems and using reasoning to solve problems rather than trying to brute force our way through. All right, so we first consider that the positive integers, let's remind ourselves what that means. These are all the numbers greater than zero that are integers. So one, two, three, etc. Um, some of them we'll call odd. This will be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on. And some we'll call even. This is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, etc. Okay? And you'll notice that, that these numbers, when they increment by 2 each step of the way. So let's use this ninth thread. So we go plus 2, we add 2, we add 2, we add 2. We just keep adding 2. Same for down here. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10, etc. Okay. Now we can rewrite even integers in the form of 2 times some positive integer. Right? So for instance, if we chose 7... 2 times 7 is 14, and that would be one of the even integers. If we chose 1, 1 times 2 is 2, and that's definitely one of the even integers. And the odd ones, we can write this in one of two ways. We can either say it's 2n minus 1 or, uh, if n is positive, or we can go 2n plus 1 if n is natural. Remember, natural includes 0. 0 plus the positive integers. Okay? So we can choose either one. We're going to stick with 2n plus 1 for most of this discussion. But you might see me switch to 2n minus 1. It doesn't matter. Either way it works. All right. So let's continue right along here. Theorem 1. Theorem number one. This says let A and B be positive integers. With every theorem, you have to be specific about what the variables are. We have if A is even and B is even, oh, that's right, and, then a plus b is also even. If a is even, but b is odd, then a plus b is odd. And if a is odd, but b is even, then a plus b is odd. And finally, the last combination. If A is odd and B is odd, then A plus B is even. Now, this theorem is given without proof. It's actually one of the exercises to solve the other three. We're going to focus on this second statement in the chapter in this book. We're going to focus on that. So we assume for this second line that A is even, which means it's some number times 2, and B is odd, so it's another number times 2, plus 1. Okay. N is positive, 
but k is natural. It's zero or positive. Okay. So let's add a plus b. That's going to be 2n plus 2k plus 1, which if we factor out that 2, we get n plus k times 2 plus 1. And we note that n plus k is a positive integer. Okay, So we get 2 times m, where m equals n plus k plus 1, which is odd. That's the definition for odd. 2 times some number plus 1, then it's odd. Now, there we go. That's how we prove that for that second line, if A is even and B is odd, then A plus B is odd. We've shown, we plugged in the even for A, the odd for B. We factored out the 2, and we noticed we had this extra 1 left over, which means that it's odd. Okay, let's do theorem 2. Theorem 2 talks about squares. It says, let A be a positive integer. Okay. If A is even, then A squared is also even. And if A is odd, then a squared is odd. Okay, we'll prove both of these. Okay, so let's do the first one first. So, if a is even, then a squared is equal to 2n squared, which is equal to 4, that's 2, 2 squared, times n squared, which is equal to 2 times 2n squared, and this is a positive integer. Okay, so that's the definition of even, two times something. And if a is so odd, we'll have to work a little harder for this one. a squared is going to be 2n plus 1 squared. This time n is natural, it's not positive, which is going to be 2n squared plus 2 times 2n times 1, that's the 2ab part of a plus b squared, and then finally plus 1 squared, which is just 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. And we note that we can factor out a 2 here. We note that this is an integer. And so we get 2 times some integer plus 1, and therefore it's odd. Okay. Corollary. The corollary is uh, an additional part to the theorem that's interesting and useful. Well, I shouldn't say useful. Math isn't necessarily useful. It is fun, though, and interesting. So let A be positive. Integer. If A squared is even, then A is even. And if a squared is odd, then a is odd. Okay. And the proof here, he doesn't really go deep into it. He doesn't really have to. He says the only way you can get a squared odd is if you start with an odd. And the only way you can get a squared even is if you start with an even. So therefore, it works in reverse too. So this is one of those if and only if things. So we can actually change this to read up at the top here. If and only if if and only if okay that's what iff means okay now we get to an interesting part this is a part that actually i didn't study um, very much before but it's useful we're going to do it the word that we're using now is we're going to say I'll, I'll write it out this way okay we say d divides n okay and when we say that, or we also we also can say same statement, n is divisible by d. 
And we say that when we can write it out like this, n equals dk. Okay. And for this, we have to say that k is an integer, any integer. n and d are also integers. I believe d has to be positive. Um, what does it say? An even integer is a positive integer, which is divisible by 2. Okay, So n, d, and k can all be integers. Okay, I think d has to be positive, though. I'm pretty sure. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. And so we can say, basically, even means it's divisible. Uh, when we say n is even, we say n is divisible by 2. And when we say n is odd, we mean n is not divisible by 2. So for instance, for 3, we can't say 3 is equal to some number, uh, let's say 2. It's not 2 times some number k. There is no integer times 2 that will get you 3 or 7 or 9 or anything like that. So 3 is odd. But 4, for instance, if you write it out this way, there is integers that you can multiply 2 by to get 4. In this case, two. Okay, so that is the section. Let's go over the homework. This homework's a bit more involved. I don't want you to freak out because most of them say proof. Uh, proofs, proofs are basically what you've been doing. So problems one through seven are basically we've been doing proofs for these lessons. Now you get to do it. Okay, so figure out how to solve them and then solve them. Okay, the way we've done. Numbers 8 through 15. Okay. Powers of 2 are numbers such as 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. Each time you're going up, you're multiplying by 2. So you're going times 2, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. And they are, powers of 2 are basically 2 to the n where n is an integer. Okay? That's what powers of 2 mean. And for problems 16 through 30, no, 23, um, basically powers of 3 are 3, 9, 27, and 81, dot, dot, dot. So it's like 3 to the n where n is an integer. Okay? So you have to find the largest power of 3 that divides those numbers. Okay, 24 is really confusing. The first time my kids saw this, they freaked out. They were like, Dad, what does this mean? I don't understand. It's a new definition. Just calm down. <laughs> okay, so you have A, and then you have this triple sign B, and then you write mod 5. And what this is saying, it says A is congruent to b modulo 5. That's how it's read. a is congruent to b modulo 5. That's how you read it. He's telling you how to read it. And what that means is a minus b is divisible by 5. Okay, let's pull up the definition of what divisible means. What does that mean? It means that you can write it out as n equals dk. Here, in this case, n is a minus b. Um, d is 5. And k is some integer that you can write it out like that. That's what that means. Okay, So you're going to write out a minus b equals 5 times k. Okay. Now, when he writes out a plus x is congruent to b plus y mod 5, well, your left-hand side is a plus x. So you take a plus x. You subtract the other side, minus a, or b plus y, and it has to be divisible by 5, so 5k. That's what that means. And when he says ax 
is congruent to by mod 5. Scroll up if I need to. There we go. Ax is congruent to by mod 5. You just write Ax minus by equals 5k. And then you solve that as normally. 25, you're using d instead of 5. And 26 is interesting. 26 is a really good problem. I don't want to give it away, but I will give you some strong hints here. Assume that every positive integer can be written in one of the forms, 3k, 3k plus 1, and 3k plus 2, where k is an integer. So k is an integer. Okay. What you have to do is show that if some integer, let's say n, is divisible by what? By 3. What does that mean? It means n equals 3 times some other integer. Let's use r. Okay, Not the same integer as here, but over here. Then that has to mean that the square of one of these is divisible by 3. So you take the square of one of these. Let's say 3 k plus 1 squared equals 3 r. Is that the case where k and r are integers? Does it work for 3k plus 2? Does it work for 3k? 3k squared equals 3r. Does that make any sense? Okay, That's what you're trying to figure out. You're trying to prove that the only case where it works is for 3k. 3k plus 1 doesn't work and 3k plus 2 doesn't work. A fairly short section, but I hope that you spend your time on the homework and you try to tackle these proofs. They're not that difficult, but they are interesting. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know how I'm doing in the comments below. Take care and bye-bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. This video is part of my series on Sergey Lang's basic mathematics. You can click here to watch the rest of the videos in the playlist. You can click here to learn more about me, and you can click here to support my channel. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.